I firmly believe that there will be a diamond mine in the Temiskaming area based on the results that companies have had over the years. The Con property is right in the, uh, the heart of one of the premier uh, mining camps in Canada, and that's Cobalt. Alcon made a prospecting discovery. He was very, very successful in uncovering a very good showing of uh, Kimberlite Dyke. And that was co confirmed by uh, the OGS and uh, amongst one of the uh, resident geologist Gary Grabowski uh, was one of, the, uh, one of the visitors that uh, applied his research and his team confirmed that, that indeed it was a uh, hyperbyssal Kimberley. My name is Gary Grabowski. I'm here to speak on behalf of RJK Explorations Limited uh, on their Con Kimberley target south of the town of Cobalt. I became involved with diamond exploration fairly early on in my career. Uh, having been district geologist in Kirkland Lake from 1980 to 2013 when I retired, uh, Glenn Kasner asked me if I would be an advisor for RJK based on my uh, experience and knowledge of the Kimberlite and diamond exploration in the area. The general geology around cobalt is you have early uh, volcanic rocks that have been isoclinally folded and eroded to an almost vertical attitude. These in turn are overlain by sedimentary rocks of what we term Heronian supergroup, Gilganda formation rocks. And those are conglomerates and siltstones that are relatively flat lying, lying on top. These have been intruded by nipissing dye-based sills. These are, are mafic magmas that uh, sill out into the rocks. And on, on another story, is this is the, uh, the locus of a lot of the silver deposits in cobalt that uh, produced over 500 million ounces of silver. Later, uh, during Jurassic, about 150 million years ago, these rocks have now been uh, intruded by these kimberlite bodies. So when you look at the stratigraphy, you have old volcanic rocks that are tilted almost vertically, flat-lying Goganda sediments, nipissing sills, and kimberlite bodies. When I looked at Alcon's dike, I noticed that the, the dike was intruding or cutting across the Goganda formation sediments. Therefore, they had to be younger than the Goganda sediments. To backtrack a bit, going back to the uh, Archean or the older volcanic stratigraphy, there are a, a similar rock type to kimberlite called lamprophere, and there are lamprophere dikes within the Archean volcanic rocks. And the lamprophere is older than the Goganda sediments. So the lamprophere, which looks very similar to the hypobyssal kimberlite, does not cut through the Goganda sediments. Therefore, when I saw Al's, uh, what turned out to be kimberlite dike, my immediate uh, thought was this is a lamprophere dike. However, it cuts through the Goganda sediments. Therefore, it isn't one of the Archean lamprophires. The first drill hole on the 2020 winter drill program was to drill test the Con Kimberlite dike so that we have a reference to what other targets may or may not look like. The first drill hole uh, that tested the, the Con Kimberlite was a hypobyssal Kimberlite. You notice the angular nature of the breccias that indicates that it was a violent eruption of the Kimberlite magma. To this, it's fine-grained, it's very dark and magnetic just by putting a magnet close to it. So that's the first hole hit all this hypobyssal kimberlite. The uh, macrochristic olivines altered and, and that's what we're 
finding in the first dike. Hole number two was the a vertical hole to test the, the geophysical target. The hole was collared in kimberlite underneath 12 meters of overburden and continued on for 100 meters in kimberlite. And then the second hole was a 45 degree angle hole from the same setup so that the overburden uh, was reached at about 13 meters uh, in depth as well. So it's, it's a relatively close to surface target, close enough that they could be stripped off in our, with, a, uh, with a backhoe or a, or a shovel. And the, the importance of that is that if you want to get a bulk sample for further testing to get enough material, uh, drilling costs are around $100 a meter. And one meter of core of, say, NQ, the, the bigger your core, the higher per meter it costs. So in order to get the volume of core to get 100, 500 tons of material, is very expensive to drill. However, if you have a kimberlite body close enough to surface that you want to bulk sample, if you can scrape it off and dig it up with a backhoe, then that it's more cost-effective exploration that way. I have visited uh, in 2007 the Akati and Divik mines. I was uh, visited the Victor mine that De Beers have in Attawapiskat. Uh, and going back to the early 1980s, finding kimberlite boulders, uh, I've always had a, an interest in, in kimberlites and diamond exploration. Um, I firmly believe that there will be a diamond mine in the Temiskaming area based on the results that companies have had over the years.